This is gonna look exactly like the real submarine as it sits today. This is the hull by itself without any of the framework or ballast tanks attached to it. This is an exact one-tenth scale of the full-size submarine. I'm gonna go over some of the basic math so you understand where to start. This scale model is 11 inches long, three inches of inner diameter, and the full-size sub, the hull is 110 inches long by 30 inches in diameter. So the goal of a scale model submarine like this is to see how it's going to perform before you build the full-size thing. I spent $28,000 building the full-size submarine, and it would really suck if I built that submarine and I put it in the water and it was sitting like this, or even worse, if it sank coming right off the trailer. Or maybe you just want a really cool scale model submarine that works. Either way, right here, I have some calculations for the scale model submarine. The volume of this bottom portion is 0 0.34 gallons. We have the conning towers. Each one is also three inches in diameter, 2.7 inches tall from the top of the bottom section of the hull here. And each of these have a volume of 0 0.08 gallons. We also have the ballast tanks. These are 1 tenth scale ballast tanks. And these are one and a half inches in diameter, 4.8 inches long, and have a capacity of 0.004 gallons. If you were to take a gallon of milk container of that, empty, and put it underwater, you would need 8.33 pounds attached to it to make it neutrally buoyant because you're displacing the volume of one gallon of water. This little piece of steel right here uh, weighs 200 pounds and it's full size counterpart. So if you put that on there, now we can simulate a person sitting in the front of the submarine. This is made out of PVC pipe, and PVC is not going to replicate the weight of the sub being fully built out of steel. So how are we going to do this? Well, in the full-size submarine, we got those two big I-beams on the bottom. We're going to simulate the total weight of the hull and the I-beams in this scale model by combining the weights of both into one big beam on the bottom. It's as close as we're going to get but each one of these is equivalent to 1,725 pounds. One of the coolest things about scale models is you can play around, you can uh, do it with hot glue, you can break it off, you can move it back, you can figure out, okay, this is where I need the weight. You can see that once I put this one on just a little too high. Oh, look at that. Then we have this piece of steel, which is equivalent to 700 pounds. Now this is going to get placed back here. And the purpose of that, let's flip this over now that that glue's dry, is this tower in the back is going to want to rise and when it goes underwater. And so to counteract that, you're going to want to add some more weight on the back side of the submarine. Oh yeah, coming together just like the real thing. Put this ballast tank in here. At, we got the four and F ballast tanks on, framed out. Now we're gonna do the side tanks, the main tanks. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, this looks badass. Looking really good. Got the ballast tanks on, it's all framed out, just like the real thing. How are we doing the side skirts? We got a big sheet of aluminum, baby. And this is gonna go on it. Oh, it's gonna look so good. I'm gonna go right over the side like this. We just gotta get it all shaped up. Bend it. Just wait, just, just wait. Check this out. Side skirts, this is gonna be sick. Scale model submarine, it looks like the real one and works like the real one, oh yeah. Okay, we even got some 1 10th scale clamps. I'm just kidding, but this is awesome. Now we got little clamps to hold it while the glue dries on a scale model submarine. So now that this is drying, we need to make the hatches look real uh, because they're PVC, they got that flat top on them. We're gonna use some uh, clay, super glue. And now 
what we're gonna do, got a paper clip right here. We're going to make a handle for the hatch. I love it. That is awesome. We are getting closer to a near perfect one tenth scale of the submarine. And that's an exact copy of the uh, ballast tank on the little submarine right there. Um, with the 45 degree angle, um, vents right from the top right here on the edge. So all the glue is done. Now we're working on the deck. And the deck, I am cutting out the hole for the rear conning tower. Uh, there's just something so exciting when it comes to building a scale model. So as you all know from the previous video, I'm using this, which is was the original scale model. I never actually finished it to make it look like the submarine when it was done because that wasn't its purpose. The purpose was to just, you know, make sure everything was going to work the way I wanted it to. But now I'll have a one-tenth scale look-alike of the finished sub, which is super cool. Beautiful. Deck is down. What I did not tell you is that the glue gun actually broke. So I am melting the glue with this torch. Both of them broke. So how am I doing it? Well, you got to improvise. It's like 10 o'clock at night right now. And this video is going to be dropping uh, Christmas Day, probably. So now, I need to work on the dive planes. So for the dive planes, cut these out. And what we're going to do, we're going to stack them on top of one another. Uh, I'm going to use this little wood piece. That's going to get glued. And there, and there we go. We have a finished dive plane. Oh, that's going to look so good. Oh, doesn't that look perfect? Ha ha ha. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just got the cleat on there. This is going to be like the most hyper-realistic scale model of, of a real submarine that actually functions. A little micro thermoformed viewports. My face in there with the red lights on. That's hilarious. It looks perfect. Super like, I don't even know what to say, but it's like, I am so like pumped with how this is looking. This looks so realistic. This looks just like the real sub. One thing I did cut out of the video just to save some time and get to the point, I uh, cut metal off the bottom and I brought this up higher and uh, now it's proportionate to the real submarine. So now we are going to paint the edges of the dive planes red. We're going to paint the ballast tanks black, the hatch handles red, and then we are going to put our little viewports on. It's looking so perfect. The moments you've been waiting for. Today is the second day. I'm wearing a Bill shirt because they were just playing last night. We are going to drop the scale model submarine in the water here. We got the vinyl tube. We're gonna hook this up on the four and a half ballast tank. So I'm gonna play with the trim and uh, demonstrate it working. Oh baby. This barely fits in this tote. I had to go to the store twice and this is the second one that I bought and it still barely fits. The first one it didn't fit in. So yeah, first one I'm gonna do is I'm going to take tape and I wanna tape the top of the main ballast tanks. I'll probably put like some miniature like valves on them in the future, but this is the best we got for today. All right, guys, here it goes. So these tanks are actually flooding. The tape is not working that well. So let me take the tape off the main ballast tanks. So we're gonna just play with the trim. <laughs> it's dropping, it's dropping. 
Okay, that's that's exactly how it would do it in real life if I were to just flood the forward for ballast tank. You can see the hatch is starting to go underneath the water. Now, right now we're gonna release the aft ballast tank. Put my finger off the, the hose. I'm gonna rotate this a little bit. So a big observation right now, what do you notice? All the tanks are full and this has not gone down all the way. Why? Because there's no occupants inside. I didn't add 200 pounds in the front or the aft. 200 pounds. Oh. We got it. We got it, she's underwater. I said we just wanna lift the front up. I'm gonna blow some air into this without pulling on the hose. <laughs> there it is. Blew the front ballast tank and now the nose is up and out of the water. It's really hard to use my mouth to blow through these. Uh, I ordered syringes and was gonna connect the syringe. That was the plan, but they didn't arrive and it's Christmas Eve. And I'm trying to get this video out for you guys uh, and have this edited so that way it can just be scheduled to post on Christmas day. So anyway, I gotta keep it at this angle because it keeps bumping into it and getting uh, stuck. I can pull up and give it a slight pull up and then it comes up. I can push, I can push down on it and then it'll just keep sinking. I pull up, it'll keep rising. So like, that's how you know you're like really close because when you push on it, it just moves that direction. It's not gonna wanna rise on its own or sink on its own because then it'd be positive or negatively buoyant. And this is a beautiful example because when I first put the sub on the water during the surface trials and tried to dive it for the first time, it would go down nose first like this and I couldn't get the rear hatch underneath the water. And so I was able to solve that problem by removing some of the air volume out of the rear conning tower because on the floor there was a seat. So instead of putting the seat there, I made a mold and filled it with concrete to remove some of the air volume and add a little bit of weight. It canceled out this, this air pocket in the back of the tower along with that big weight on the bottom of the sub. And that's how I was able to fix that problem. And so, you know, you can simulate that by just putting the weight on the back of the sub here and you can see how when I release it, it's negatively buoyant right now because all the tanks are flooded completely, even the, even the hard tanks, the four and a half tanks. But when I release it, it falls evenly. If you want to see this in more water with the syringes, uh, a little more calculated uh, testing, uh, drop a like. Uh, or if you enjoyed the video, period, just drop a like. Uh, we're still a small channel and thank you everybody. We just broke a thousand subscribers and we're already at 1200. So thank you so much to everyone. Have a Merry Christmas and a happy holidays. Any questions, throw them down in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them.